Hello class, this is section 4.2 and in this video we are going to talk about how we can use partial differential equations to model vibrating strings. So let's consider a string and let's consider a string that's fastened on both ends and one where we are interested in figuring out how it's going to vibrate. Now let the, us draw a small section of the string in this way. We're looking at the section between coordinate x and x plus delta x, so delta x is a small interval. And we have this function u x t, which tells us the height of the string at location x at time t. So you may imagine that our string is actually tied to a post in both ends, and we're looking at a tiny, tiny little section of it here. So this is our x and x plus delta x. So we are exploring it up this way. We're looking at a small section of the string. So the u tells us the height of the string at position x at time t. And we want to introduce a few other terms, a few other expressions. One of the terms we want to introduce is the rho. So rho is known as the mass density. It's how dense the string is. And this is expressed in terms of a kg per meter. So it tells you uh, how many kilograms of mass there is in one meter of string. And we want to also introduce the tension force, T. So the string has tension on both ends. So for instance, in the left end of the little section here, we'll draw a tangent vector. There's going to be a force pulling on the string in this direction. And this force is going to be of magnitude T. Uh, that should be a straight line, and I'm really bad at drawing lines. Let me try to fix it a little bit. Right, so there's a force pulling on the left end, and also a force pulling on the right end. So T is called tension. And for our purposes, we're going to assume that the tension is the same everywhere. So the arrows are of the same length. Um, they don't look like it. Let me fix that again. All right, so this looks somewhat correct now. All right, so we have tension pulling in both ends, and they are pulling in at a certain angle, the angle of the string. So you have the string tension in that way. And using this information, we are going to try to develop a differential equation that can, we can use to model the movement of the vibrating string. Now let's consider what forces are acting on the string. We are only going to care about vertical forces, forces that move the string up or down. We are going to ignore forces moving the string left or right. So the first thing to think about is Newton's law, F equals mass times acceleration. And it turns out that we have a pretty nice way to describe acceleration. Since U is the height of the string, the vertical acceleration is just going to be the second derivative of U with respect to time. Again, we only care about up and down motion, so this works out. Mass is also pretty easy to calculate. We have the mass density, which is the amount of mass contained in one meter of the string. So we only have um, a length of delta x here. So our mass is going to be rho, which is the amount of mass in one meter of the string, times delta x meters. So that's our mass is going to be. And we have, for from the mass, F equals rho delta x times the second derivative of u with respect to t. So that's a force acting on the string. Let's also consider the forces that are due to tension. But to do that, we're going to have to add a, another variable here. So let's consider, let's call this angle, the angle of the tangent line here. This is going to be theta of xy, and the angle of this tangent line is going to be theta x plus delta x. Oh, it's not a y, it's a t, times t. So theta is basically the angle of the string at against the horizontal axis. So we are going to try to calculate the force of the left tension. So let's call this from the mass, and let's try to think about the 
left tension. From the left tension, we have this force T. However, it's not pulling downwards completely, it's pulling downwards at an added angle. So we need to figure out what the vertical component is. So let's figure that out. Um, we draw a triangle. So this is this way. We need to figure out what this arrow is. And let me draw that in red. However, um, we know that this is theta. And this is a parallel line, so this is going to be theta as well. But it turns out that the red line, um, the force downward, is actually sine of theta xy times the hypotenuse. The hypotenuse is the length of the vector, and that's just going to be t. So that's f theta, that's from the left tension line. So we have just sine theta xy, xt, sorry, I'm not sure why I keep on drawing y here, times t. And similarly, doing the same thing for the right tension line, we are looking at the vertical component of the force vector. We can get that this is also going to be a sine function. For the right tension, we get t sine theta x plus delta x t. Because to get the vertical component, we need to multiply the sine opposite of our hypotenuse times the hypotenuse length, and the hypotenuse length is t. So we obtain this right tension that way. So we have the force left, force right. Again, so according to physics, these three forces need to balance out. So we need f to mass equal to f left plus f right. Now let's figure out some signs here. Um, according to our picture, the right half is pulling up and the left is pulling down. So we should write, down, write this down as um, minus fl plus fr. And we have rho times delta x times second derivative of u respect to xt equals to minus the f of the left, which is going to be minus t sine theta xt plus t sine theta x plus delta xt. So remember that delta x is this small section of the string, and we want to take the limit as delta x goes to zero. So let's see what happens. So first we divide by delta x, and we end up with this equation, moving the delta x to the right-hand side. But now we take the limit as delta x goes to zero, and well, nothing happens on the left. But on the right, remember that by the definition of the derivative, the derivative is the limit as delta x goes to zero of, of fx plus delta x minus fx over delta x. That's the definition of the derivative. And this is exactly what we have on the right-hand side over here. So this is actually the derivative with respect to x of sine theta xt. We're almost there, and all we have to do is to replace this theta x with some version of u. So let's recall what theta x was. Theta x was the angle of the tangent line of the string. And that's hopeful because we can write down du dx as a tangent line as well. So let's, let's um, zoom in in this diagram. So we see here, theta is the angle between the horizontal and the tangent line at xt of the height. However, recall that partial u, partial x is the slope at xt. So this is x over here. This is slope xt, which is equal to the rise over the run. But rise over run is the same thing as saying opposite over hypotenuse, which 
clearly it's just going to be sine of theta x t. And therefore, we can replace the sine term in this equation by the derivative with respect to x. And taking the derivative of the derivative is of course the same as the second derivative. So we can simplify things a bit further and we get the vibrating string equation with a constant c squared where c is the square root of t over rho.